So uh, let me start. I'm the leader of a group at the uh, University of Zurich and this is Institute of Bioinformatics, Ontology in Biomax. And with this slide, I suppose I was trying to beat Johannes in the competition for most logos on my slide. <laughs> So what I'm going to talk about is biothermal and other tools that we described to develop in my group. But before that, I will give you a quick uh, idea of the research we do with projects I am involved with, and the tools, and then what we spe specifically propose for this hackathon. So this is an example of a project in which we deal with uh, veterinary text. So we have a collaboration with the uh, veterinary faculty at the University of Bern, and they provide us with the pathology reports of that animals and these are in German. And you have see examples of uh, terminology that you find in these reports. And, um, and you saw different problems like misspelling, spelling variants, inflections. And what we try to do is to automate the recognition of similarity between these terms. This is, um, I believe, very important, even for a very simple information retrieval problem. If you want to find all uh, reports that talk about this disease, you need to be able to recognize that these terms represent the same concept. Then we try to connect those terms to standard resources, like the UMLS. We try to build a bridge from the term to the semantics through the UMLS. Uh, this is used in, uh, in an epidemiological studies. We first classified these reports in syndromic groups, uh, groups of diseases. And then the, our collaborators at the University of Bern uh, studied, um, for example, geographical distribution of diseases and temporal distribution of diseases. This is an example. Another project in which I'm involved uh, deals with uh, causes of psychological disorders. This is a collaboration with the Institute of Psychology at the University of Zurich. And, um, and, and here the, problem, the idea is that from the literature, we want to get potential causes. Like here, this is a genetic potential cause. This gene might be involved in schizophrenia. Um, there are many potential causes of disease. So part of the problem is to, to, this is a very broad category. So it's very difficult to define. We created a small corpus uh, manually notated with um, the relationship between causes and, uh, and uh, disorders. And we do various, various types of studies, for example, temporal studies in the distribution of the diseases. This might actually tell more about the usage of terminology than the actual disease. In another project, a collaboration with a pharma company, we are looking at uh, the uh, disambiguation of author names. Uh, people move from one institution to another, so it might not be obvious that uh, this Holmes is the same as this Holmes. Uh, sometimes the institution is not mentioned in the literature, in the, um, in the paper, and, and sometimes it might, might have changed because the person has moved. So what we are trying to do in this project is to match and, and detect the theotos are the same. In another project, uh, recently started, uh, we are going to analyze uh, medical records, electronic records from five Swiss hospitals. We'll deal with the so as you know, in Switzerland, we have problems in several languages. My group will deal with the, uh, with the German uh, reports. And we have collaborators who will do the French part. And another project starting now, we are going to mine social media for mention of adverse drug reaction. This is a collaboration with a big, big pharma company, the same as before, by the way. And, and I, as, as you see, if anyone is interested, I urgently need somebody to work in this project. So please contact me if, uh, if, you, if you think you are suitable. Uh, um, another project is a collaboration with the Regulon DB uh, uh, group uh, in Mexico. They do curation for uh, genetic regulation in E. coli. And I have been collaborating with them for five years within the scope of an NIH funded project. And here, what we try to show is that uh, tax mining can actually help curation. And I would be happy to debate this further with Johannes. My point is that uh, uh, tax mining can help, uh, help, not properly. Other steps uh, of the curation process. And, and I have a nice example here. Um, basically, they curated regulation uh, of uh, genes with the transcription factors. And they did this for 6,000 papers. So the size of the database is comparable to that of Swissprot. And uh, basically, what we did is to try to recognize where this information came from. And having found potential sentences where that information is, uh, came from, what, we, what they can easily identify something that was missing, that is the experimental condition. And, um, and uh, my, my point is that um, with the help of text mining tools, they could do this a lot more efficiently uh, that, they, um, that otherwise. Actually, probably it wouldn't be impossible to analyze those 6,000 papers find experimental condition without the support of uh, text mining tools. We provide a, a, an interface that helps them to find 
locate the positions in the text that they already curated where those um, uh, genetic regulation was mentioned. And then from that bit, they uh, find more efficiently the experimental conditions. The experimental conditions have been added uh, now to the um, regular DB database. So, but this is another argument, don't have the time for it. So let me come to the tools that we develop in my group. Biothermat is a, an aggregator, an aggregator of terminologies coming from several databases. So oh, all curated databases provide terminology, obviously the names of all their entities, analysis for those entities, identifiers. We try to collect them and we have pro created an interface which is um, 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 publicly accessible, where basically when you first load it, you will get a list of resources and the tool will also check at the that point if any of the resources have been updated since the last time we downloaded. If yes, you have the choice to uh, get the most recent one. And the idea is that then you can select some of these and download the most recent version of this resource, just the terminology coming from that resource, in, in a single, simple, for, in simplified, simple, unified format, PSV. And then we do studies on the ambiguity of this terminology. This is, as, as I mentioned from the beginning, part of my interest is the biomedical terminology. So we do studies in how ambiguous these terms are. And for example, cell lines are much less ambiguous than chemicals. And we have tables that show that uh, a lot of ambiguities in protein gene names, as expected, nothing surprising here. Then overlapping between categories, different categories of terms. These are all studies that, that we do with this terminology. Um, OGA is a tool that then uses the terminologies coming from the Biotherm Hub to annotate text. You, you can access it as a web interface where you can basically uh, ask the tool to the web interface, it's available as a web service, to annotate text. Um, it provides a restful web service, I skip some details, different input and output formats. And um, we tested in this as a web service in a competition, by a creative competition, where it achieved the best result as the most efficient web service for this kind of task. Uh, I detail, skip some details about uh, the um, architecture. Uh, obviously, another problem then is the ambiguity. Even if you notate these terms, these are very ambiguous. Each of these terms can mean many different things. And I can bring you examples for the name of genes. This is the name of gene. Was is the name of gene. And if I continue like this, probably every single word of English will be the name of a gene. So if I do, do, do this naively, then almost all my text will be annotated with uh, gene or protein names. So what we do in, in uh, recent work is uh, to uh, create, a, say, a way to disambiguate potential candidate annotations. This is implemented as a neural network, and we have published a paper recently uh, using the craft corpus as a mean to validate uh, their annotations. Um, at craft corpus we mentioned in a presentation before, so I can uh, skip the details. I can just mention the results. These are the results that, uh, that we obtain with, uh, in the paper. And these are results that we are achieving now. This work is continuing by, with this, by a student of mine, and we are getting much better results now in this ambiguating those terms. Okay, and we have a long history of um, but, um, text mining, participating in text mining competitions, where we achieved always uh, very good results. Now I come to the proposal for BLA. Uh, I propose to use the Biotherm Hub to uh, create, uh, um, integrate Biotherm Hub, for example, with pub dictionaries and pub annotation, or use the uh, Ogre web services. Um, the code of the Biotherm Hub is, uh, we have now made it uh, completely freely available. So it's in GitHub. And for Ogre, as I said, we have the web service. Uh, for the Biotherm Hub, there is the RESTful API. Um, so we propose to, uh, one possibility for this competition would be to um, extend this RESTful API to make it more useful. Another possibility would be to add a JSON output. Now it has only a TSV output, but um, uh, it might be uh, we should use it. Uh, and this is the GitHub where you can find it. Uh, and this, this stuff, by the way, will be repeated in probably next, uh, tomorrow by uh, Nico, who is here and collaborates with me. Um, and then another possibility would be to uh, um, work on, on the output formats of Augur. Uh, now we have um, some input output formats, for example, but um, there is um, a, a, a JSON BIOC output format now. Uh, we provide, by the way, also in our repository, a Python uh, uh, implementation of BIOC, Python code to deal with BIOC. 
and um, and, um, and and this uh, and the formats of the web uh, uh, in, um, uh, output formats of the web interface can also be further improved in various ways. So let me uh, conclude with uh, uh, acknowledgement to Mike Labetto, this is Nico, who's there, who uh, will support anyone who would like to, to work with us in the next couple of days. And thanks to BCLS for uh, giving us the opportunity uh, to present and to support. So, domo arigato gozaimasu.